Greetings, Goddess Body Mind Spirit Community. This is Omilade, your Goddess Guru, here to share a word of inspiration on your path to self realization and self mastery. Whew, it has been a while since I made a video. Um, I have been studying for my group fitness certification through ACE, which is a national certification here in the United States. Um, it's something I've been wanting to do actually ever since I became a fitness instructor. Um, but I had a group fitness certification through the Y. Didn't need ACE until the Y decided to end its group fitness certification. And so I said, well, all they did was just say, hey, you know, Omelade, go get that ACE. They really gave me that push to go and get that. I've been teaching for actually almost nine years now. And I would say probably eight of those years I've wanted to get this group fitness certification, but just caught up in motherhood. And like I said, no one's required me to have it outside of the Y. Get jobs all the time without it. Um, and I'm just sort of emphasizing that because for me it was a reminder of if you have a dream, do not let go of it. Continue to take steps to get it and you will achieve it. Okay. Um, and I will say that something I like about this and this is just again perspective and how all things are in due season. I have learned so much. It was as if I needed this process of getting the certification and learning what I've learned in it for me at this season in my life. Because I am now, and I don't even think about this, but I'm now on the downside of the 40s. I'm 46 years old. Things are different, and so I needed to get a refresher in health and how the body works, which the body is amazing. That's something that I say on a regular basis. The body is incredible. If we take time to realize exactly what we have in this, it's worth more than the silver, all the silver and gold in the world. Take care of your body temple, okay? And hopefully I'll be making some videos um, in my group fitness um, professional capacity about that. Um, first of all, I find it fascinating. And secondly, it just sort of helps to stay fresh. You have to continue to learn about the body and health and just, you know, different things like Ayurveda to understand why you do it because and this is something I'm going to talk about today the world is first of all we go asleep when we come into the world and, and it's just the world is asleep the, we as a whole as a human race are asleep um, and so it's important for us to stay awake if we waken on another level, we have to do something to, to keep that going. And so, you know, I am all about body, mind, and spirit. That's why my website says goddess, body, mind, spirit, because it's all important. Um, and so, in studying for this certification, which was a lot of work for someone who has been out of student mode um, for a while, uh, just took up all my brain space and my time. So I am back. I would like to send a shout out to Ama Soul. Thank you for all of the texts. They did make a difference. I promise you. And you can keep sending them to me to remind me to do the day, the weekly reading. Um, but I do appreciate you, sister. It, it really did keep, you know, me thinking about making the videos and pushing me to make this video today. Um, I'm going to start off with talking about um, a topic that someone asked me about. I did divination for a, a client and she asked, um, what is, um, how do you become a dark deceased ancestor? So I will address that first and then I will talk about 
wisdom that other you know that is coming forth for the week so dark deceased uh, my um, framework and the, the basis of a lot of what I study is African spirituality within African spirituality there is um, an emphasis on the ancestors um, we are taught that we have ancestors who help us and that we too can become ancestors and the way to become an, an ancestor of light is to be one who is here in the physical realm doing work to help other people sometimes it's on a smaller scale sometimes it's on a bigger scale so when we think about those pillars in the community where in the community they are great people love this person they have a heart of gold or they have that special thing that they do within the community that just makes everybody better that helps to make the community better um, you know that's one level of ancestor and we all can do that I love to use the example of my husband's uncle who I claim is my uncle too, Uncle Kobe um, Uncle Kobe lived a large part of his life. I don't know all of it, but I think a large part of his life was lived lost. Um, he was an alcoholic. He would tell anyone he had been an alcoholic. Very, very deep into alcoholism, from what I know. By the time I met Kobe, he was not an alcoholic anymore. He was not caught up in the alcoholism. Um, however, he had come been through a very serious... Um, illness, a, a, a long period of time of illness and he ended up having both of his legs amputated um, right around the knee and he would say oh don't feel sorry for me I did this to myself you know just the way I live this is what ended up happening no problem just this amazing attitude and he took responsibility no pity parties on Kobe's part um, and that's something that's very important for a lot of us. We need to stop having pity parties. I can say it because I used to be the pity party queen. You do not have time for any pity parties. Take responsibility for your life. One of the energies that has spoken today is Obara. Obara. Shango speaks through, um, through Obara. Shango says... Take freaking responsibility for your life. Don't sit around, whine and complain. Instead, understand that you are the author, the creator, the actor, the producer of your life. And so whatever you see going on in it, even people treating you in a way that you think is not good, is your script. You have written them into your script. And so you have to ask yourself, why did I write this in my script? And then perhaps take steps through choice in writing another script. So self-responsibility, so important this week, so important for the rest of your life. Kobe took responsibility for his life. Kobe would sit out on um, that my in, my um, in-laws. It was my it, he was my father-in-law's brother or is mine, whatever. And so Kobe, they built this deck out front, in the front, um, because Kobe had a wheelchair, and so he would wheel himself out the front door and sit on the deck. Kobe read books all the time. Oh my goodness, he would read, sit out there on the deck, sleep, cars passing by, cars passing by. And they would honk. We'd be out there talking to Kobe, and you hear cars honking, Kobe wave. I mean, year after year after year, folks would, you know, pass by. I don't know how Kobe got to know all of these people. They would stop and bring food. Well, what let me know just how special Kobe was, this old man who, I know he'd been in the military and maybe he worked with horses in Kentucky in some kind of way. That, that's basically you know what he did nothing big shiny bright or anything like that turned uh, man sitting on the front porch no legs 
smoking, reading, sleeping all day. That's what it was. Didn't seem like a big deal. Well, when he died, people were stopping by the house like, we haven't seen Kobe outside. Where is he? Uh, Kobe's passed. The one that I was there to see was the mailman. The mailman finally couldn't take it anymore. He said I had to come in and find out what is going on. He started crying. You can be somebody who does something as simple as say hello in a world where people do not feel like they are even seen that makes such a big difference. You can be an ancestor. I'll bring up Muhammad Ali because he has recently made his transition. You can be like Muhammad Ali. Larger than life while you are alive. And probably will be even bigger in death. Someone whose name will be mentioned for generation after generation after generation. For people, and I don't care what your ethnicity is, his story can speak to your life. He stood up for what he thought was right. He, dis he became more than I think he imagined he would become. <clears throat> self-defined you know his mama gave him one name and he decided that that was the name my mama gave me but I'm a new man with a new awakening and so I am now Muhammad Ali with a new religion a new way of thinking a new way of understanding and so you know the the, the impact that he had um, in the, the boxing um, profession to be out for years because he would not fight in a war he did not believe in and then even to come back and still be the greatest of all times it, it, his name he, 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 is, he will be an enlightened ancestor he is an enlightened ancestor <coughs> and so that's what we're all striving to Become that's what you know, African traditional and other indigenous religions teach that we are here to do good works so that once we go back into the ancestral realm, we would have done enough so that our names are called so that we can actually do work to help our ancestors who are in the physical realm. No one better to ask for help than our enlightened ancestors because guess what? They've been here, done that. <laughs> and so, you know, they help us. They can see beyond what we can see at times. And they will do things. If we listen, they will do things to try to help us go in a different direction so that we don't hit that bump in the road. They will help us perhaps even to see the bump so that we can go around it. What greater thing to do for your, the people that you've left behind? The ones who you don't even get to see because they were born after you died. Then to be an enlightened ancestor and be able to go and help them. You know? This is what it is all about. Right now, Obara is saying, look at the big picture. What difference can you make for the whole? Stop focusing on yourself so much and do some good for the greater community. Whatever that is for you. In, in, in Orsair, I went to the, um, the Egyptian oracle, the uh, Kemetic oracle. And it, Orsair says, look, we've got to have some unity. Unity does not mean homogenous. Unity means that all the different parts can come together as one that we can have harmony that all the different parts we can see how they make a difference and so sometimes uh, I may be working on women's issues I'm a, I am a woman uh, and, and of course we women we are a diverse bunch <laughs> um, but there is a an overall theme of we need to step into our power. 
empowerment means I'm taking my power. I'm I'm stepping in my power. I'm owning my power. Ain't nobody giving me power. I am going to be the power that I am. Okay? But sometimes perhaps me as one who describes herself as heterosexual, I there's a greater good that I can contribute to to help my friends who are homosexual, who are being uh, targeted for violence, for discrimination that makes absolutely no sense. Perhaps I want to help African American young men move to a place where they don't have to fear their lives dying just because they're African American being targeted for going to prison just because they're African American. Yet I'm not an African American male, but I can do something to help to the in, in the help the greater good for a group that's down and out. I could just help myself as a woman. You know, I could just help myself as an African American woman. But sometimes the greater good costs me to help somebody and because it's the right thing to do and in, in me helping them I help the world become a better place but we need to figure out a way to help people stop being so focused on the self and move to a place where we are you know united and in, 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 in helping the greater good and so um, th this is how we operate while we're in human form so that when we go on the other side we can become those kinds of ancestors that not only help their descendants but also in doing that our ancestors lead, guide and direct us in the direction that we need to go so that this world can become a better place. The opposite of that would be the dark deceased. Now, you know, Obara reminds me when I read, uh, you know, descriptions of Obara, you know, this focus on the greater good, um, you know, opening yourself to abundance and prosperity, it reminds me of the goddess Ma'at. Okay? And um, Ma'at is all about. Um, you know, love, forgiveness, um, and just really knowing that you can, you know, overcome anything. And so, when we are thinking about life and how we operate, you know, it's about operating according to divine law. I actually forgot what I was going to say. I was trying to talk to try to get myself back, but... Live, uncensored, uncensored uncut. Um, but um, it, it is true that we are here to live according to divine law. And so when we come here and we are not focused on... Oh, okay, I got it back. My eye says don't judge folks. I'm back. <laughs> We cannot judge people, but what we can do is say that when we are not operating according to the light, when we are primarily living our lives from a place of being asleep, from, and we are operating in the dark, and sometimes we're not asleep, we, we go in that dark place. There is no evolution of the soul going on. The dark, deceased ancestors can even perhaps come and hang around us. And they will begin to show us, this is where I got stuck. Maybe I got stuck in lack of stinking thinking. Maybe I got stuck in addiction to drugs alcohol. I just never could get myself together and evolve at all. Um, you know, this dark deceased thing, you know, the, some dark deceased, you know, when we really think about it, 
these people may be doing things sexually that are just sick. Dark disease could be that, you know, you think about those generational curses. I talk to people and they're like, the, the women in my family are just negative. And that keeps them stuck. That keeps them from having abundance and prosperity. It keeps them very unhappy. There's not a lot of awakening. It's very small, closed, narrow thinking. And so when the that these kinds of souls, no judgment, that's what my eye says, no judgment on movement. When these kinds of souls die, they run away from the light and they become dark deceased ancestors. And they will show up to show you where perhaps you are headed in that direction to becoming a dark deceased ancestor. This is what I learned through the Metaneta from Ra Nefa Amen. And so we give thanks. I don't like the dark disease hanging around me because what ends up happening is it's just negative. I'm just caught up in negative negativity. I'm being negative and you know it's just like oh it's horrible feeling. You know. I would lived it for a good long while. And then once I realized, oh, some of this is me and some of this is the dark disease, I was like, bye bye, the dark. this is what you can say to them. Dark disease, you cannot hang around me. I send you on your way with light and love towards your healing. For those who get divination, sometimes you can figure out what area the dark disease are affecting so that when you go there, you'll know, oh, wait a minute, I think this might be the dark disease. I need to send them on their way and then I need to check myself. So for me, it's, it's all about thinking. It's thinking, thinking. For the longest time, I'm just caught up in stinking thinking. And then I was taught, when you get caught up in stinking thinking, it may be the dark disease is showing up because that's where they got stuck. They're, they're hanging around you because they're trying to get unstuck. But in them hanging around you, they are showing you where you're headed to becoming a dark disease ancestor. And so, you know, it could be something simple. So it's the things that we do that we know make us slip, trip, and fall. And we keep just jumping down there, slip, tripping, and falling. They are the things about us that keep us stuck in our stumble. And to a certain degree, we have a relationship with them. It's a comfort zone. And we have to do our spiritual work. To move beyond it and become a new creature. <laughs> and so if you don't um, get it together and, and this is the path that you're taking, you could be on your way to becoming dark disease. You know, I tell people I love working with the energy of the goddess Oya. I tell people all the time, Oya tries to tell you in a whisper. Or Yah does not want to come in as a tornado in your life. But because she loves you so much, she will come in as a tornado. Why go there? Listen to the whispers. Watch yourself. You know where you're messing up. You know where you are putting yourself on, and the Christians will say, or the Bible will say, a broad path straight to hell. These are the things we want to think about. And I don't see hell as something that's on the other side. I see hell right here. You know, uh, the beauty is dark disease can become unstuck. I don't know the full process behind that. That's something I just haven't learned yet. But I do know they don't have to be stuck forever. Another way for a person to become stuck is to feel like you have unfinished business. The example that um, I read that makes sense to me is a mama who has a child that she's worried about. And, uh, you know, she doesn't go into the light. And because she, she's worried about this child, she doesn't want to leave. She wants to take care of this child. She may become stuck that, you can become stuck that way too. Um, but, you know, I just give thanks for all of creation giving me the opportunity to um, be able to pull from the things that are warm and fuzzy and feel good and the things that don't necessarily. But it all, that's what my eye teaches. Everything is for our highest and greatest good. The things that feel good and the things that don't feel good. And so, you know, we give thanks for the dark decease. 
because they are saying, is this where you want to go? <laughs> Do you want to have to go hang out with people around people's energies, sucking their light off because you, you don't have access to your own light yet, you know? I say too, because I've talked about this in other videos, it's important for us to acknowledge when we have dark energy hanging around us. And you will be amazed at how many people who are of the light have dark energies hanging around them. When you have a light, it attracts. Light it will attract stuff to it. And so you, we can never sleep and feel like, oh, I don't have to do my spiritual work. I'm there. <laughs> Just like I said in the beginning of the video, we cannot you know get to a place and then just say okay I'm there no we have to keep doing the work and something that I read this morning in this book called The Compound Effect talked about how small steps that look like they're boring um, they're not they're not adding up to much but consistently taking these steps over time equals big results success achieving your goals and dreams okay and it, it is no different in spirituality. And so you have to take those small daily steps. If we don't take the small mundane daily step of brushing and flossing our teeth every day, we perhaps will end up having all our teeth removed, having major dental work. In the USA, dental work costs a lot of money. It doesn't take a lot to pull them out, but baby, if you want some new tea, thousands of dollars for one tooth. <laughs> so it's easy. Brush and floss your teeth every day. The dentist will tell you that. You want your teeth to stay in your mouth? Brush and floss your teeth every day. You want to keep your spirit buoyed. You want to keep moving and growing and feeling good do your spiritual practices daily um, there is an indication that we need more self-care and nurturance um, it is important to take care of yourselves we live in a culture that keeps us amped up if you are not busy you are lazy and for those of us who loathe being lazy, you know, we, 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 we don't take too kindly to that kind of thing. But I don't see taking time out. Now, if you're taking too much time out, you're not really doing anything. Yes, perhaps you need to get busy. Okay. It's all about balance. That's what Obara is saying. You have to balance things. So we need to have the balance. But I think too much busyness is, it's no, I think, too much busyness is bad. Taking time every day to be quiet, to do things that nurture you. Yes, we have to do more in terms of not being so self-centered that we're not making a positive contribution to our community. We have to absolutely do that. Why do we have these gifts and talents just to use for ourselves? That's so boring to me. But by the same token, the gift grows. It's, the gift is a, is a baby, as I see it, an infant. It is precious. And so we have to take care of ourselves in order to take care of our gifts. What kind of mama or daddy wouldn't take the necessary action to nurture and protect their baby. That, that is against human nature as I see it. And so we have to be mama and daddy to our gifts, to ourselves. We are the gift. <laughs> and the oracle uh, I said, Yamanya, is indicating that we're not taking care of ourselves. And the more we move away from taking care of the self, the more, the less likely we are able to be authentic, the less likely we're able to open up, continue to open and awaken to our true selves. And, and the more we're not awakened to our true selves, we're not making that contribution to the world. Perhaps we're caught up in 
a whole bunch of arguing or addiction or you know just really living subpar to the truth of who and what we are so it is important for us to nurture ourselves I will suggest just because this has been coming up in my world that everyone take time to look at their emotions this week and ask yourself what are your emotions showing you um, I watched a movie recently called Emotion Emotion is all about um, the how our emotions teach us a lot of what is going on but they get stuck in us also and we have to release stored emotions because basically these stored emotions are programming and so as we act in the world we're basically operating to memorized programming that's in the form of emotions that's stuck in our bodies and so it is important for us to look at what emotions are coming up you can look at the emotions from the chakra, the chakras. If you know about the Odu, you should study the emotions based on the Odu. If you know the Metuneter wisdom, you should uh, study it based on the wisdom of the Neter. Um, I said I'm uh, making a commitment, not quite sure when, but it, hopefully within the next year to learn more about EFT, but you don't need to wait on me to learn about EFT. You should learn about EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique or something like that. I have a book on it. Um, but EFT, and essentially EFT addresses blockages that are in the body and they disrupt the blockages to get the energy flowing. And of course, emotional, it has to do with unblocking emotion. They, there are a number of techniques that you can use, modalities. Oh, chanting is another way to shift the energy. Doing yoga will shift the energy. That's what you're wanting to do. You're wanting to get your energy unblocked. Goes back to what I was saying in the beginning of the video. It's important for us to know what is going on with this right here. <laughs> because this right here is in fact dictating quite a bit of what you see going on in your life and so you know the more you learn about how this operates you know, even changing let's go to something that's you know more in the body um, domain changing the kind of food that you eat will in fact change the energy of your body I don't like to say good food and bad food I like to talk about food as energy and so, are you eating food that makes you ticked off? Are you eating food that keeps you crying and whining? Are you eating food that vitalizes your system? Are you eating food that supports your the, the, the part of your body that is on um, automaton, basically? That is running the body systems, whether you think about it or not? Or are you eating foods that disrupt that part of yourself, that make it harder for it to make your heart beat in a healthy way, your hormones flow and be released in a healthy way? You know, are you supporting that or are you hindering that? And the kind of food that you eat, it matters. There is a number of ways to address shifting the energy, releasing the emotions. But we have to be awake, we have to be conscious, we have to be aware. This is Omilade, Omilade your goddess guru. I hope that I have shared something that will assist you on your path to self-realization and self-mastery. I'm wishing you a wonderful day, a wonderful week, month, year. We're getting ready to go into the summertime here in the Northern Hemisphere which makes me so happy. So enjoy whatever season you're in. Peace and love and light to you all. Out.